Hi, welcome back to the Golf Youth Forum on HTV Bayou Town. We actually have two members of the audience who wanted to get up and ask some of their own questions. First, we have James Chauvin. James, please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and then ask your question. Yes, I'm James Michael Chauvin. I'm a lifelong resident of Homa as well. Uh, I care about this because I'm concerned about how this is going to affect my country and my state and our national security um, and the security of the state. Um, considering that I believe the figure is for every two miles of marshland there are, that's one foot of storm surge negated during a storm. And the, uh, the oil is causing problems for the grass and trampling through the oil to, uh, through the grass to cl uh, clean the oil is causing problems. How long do you speculate that it'll take the marsh to rebound? That question is so easy, I'll let Mike answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ted. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's a complicated question, and, and I can't tell you that I can give you an exact answer. But I will say to you that in South Louisiana, we've produced oil for 50 or 60 years or more. We've had minor spills in the past. They actually use different methods to clean up after those spills. And the marsh has rebounded uh, as a result of all of the methods they've used in the past. There are some differences in this one in that it's, it's, it's more than we're used to dealing with. But I personally believe that we will be OK. I don't think we're going to lose a significant amount of marshland as a result of this. Now, my opinion could change if we get a hurricane that comes in, uh, say, on the Texas-Louisiana border and pushes all that oil inland, and it really oils the marsh. But today, where we are today, uh, we have some impacts. We need to deal with them. Uh, some of the methods to deal with it people don't like. They might need to burn some of those. But I think overall we're going to be okay and the marshes will be okay, save more catastrophic challenges like a hurricane. And just, you, just a quick follow-up on that. I, I agree with Mike completely. Uh, I had the opportunity to fly over much of the marsh that's impacted today, and uh, I, I think it's going to recover. Uh, certainly there'll be some minimal impacts on the real area, the areas that are really burnt in the first 25, 30 feet from the shoreline. But uh, I got to believe that's going to come back and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. Okay. Thank you, yeah, thank you Mr. Fagu, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Voisin, for, for the answer. Our second guest that wants to ask a question is Lauren Landry. Lauren. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself and then ask your question, please. Um, my name's Lauren. I'm student council president at Vanderbilt. And I was wondering if there was anything that, like, the schools can do or, like, even the students personally to get involved and to help out. I'll take that one. Um, certainly, under the leadership of our governor and lieutenant governor, uh, we created what's called the Gulf Economic Survival Team. Uh, and uh, you, as well as anyone, can join that team. Uh, you go to www.gest.la.gov. Uh, and you can sign a petition uh, to uh, support uh, uh, opposing the moratorium. You can uh, be, get involved in uh, letter writing. You can get involved in, actually, we need people who are actually losing their jobs, uh, being impacted by this moratorium to, uh, to give examples of what's happening, because that will help in the support of this appeal that's upcoming. And uh, clearly, uh, those things uh, everyone can, can play a part of. And, and stay tuned to that website, and more things will be coming for involvement into the future. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Fagu, and thank you, Lauren, for asking your question. Uh, to end with, I'd like to ask Mr. Vazen, uh, do you have any final thoughts? Sure. I, I, you know, I've used this quote a lot during this challenge, uh, Vinny, and that is that it's not the strong that survive. It's not the most intelligent, but those that adapt to change. And in South Louisiana, we adapt to change better than any other group of people in the world. Uh, we're a resilient group of people. You know, most people aren't really interested in the storms that you have when you're at sea. They're interested in whether you bring the boat in or not. And we're great at that as well. And, and our goal now is to bring the boat in, to get back into full seafood production, to rebuild our economy, to get the oil and gas community moving forward, and adapt to that change that's been presented to us. And I know that we will, and we have the ability to do that. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Fagu, your final thoughts? 
And I, I certainly agree with, with Mike's uh, closing statement that uh, we, we will rebound. Uh, we are resilient. Uh, you know, we deal with hurricanes every year. We can deal with this. Uh, we'll, we'll make it a better place, uh, but there will be impacts, no question. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to close with is um, something that just became aware of this afternoon. Uh, Friday, uh, Senator Landrieu is, is coming down with what I call the $20 billion man. This is Mr. Feinberg who will administer the $20 billion fund at the, uh, for the government and for BP. And uh, he's going to come to the Rose Civic Center at noon and would like to hear from people about uh, what they think, uh, how they think this money should be spent, uh, what kind of experiences they're having, uh, and just so he can start to formulate uh, how he's going to deal with uh, this large sum of money and how he's going to distribute it uh, in an equitable manner. So um, that will be at 12 noon Friday at the Rose Civic Center. That's I, I understand also, Ted, to follow up on what you said, that uh, he's going to also be in Homa, but I don't know what time. Did you get a time on that? I, I think they're only going to have time for, for the LaRose La Civic okay. Center and then to Chalmette. Okay, so no, no Homa. Yeah, that's probably true. not Homa. Okay. Uh, and that ought to be in tomorrow's press release. Okay, good. That's great. We'll look forward to see what happens to that. Well, that about wraps up our time here on the Golf Youth Forum on Bayou Time. I'd like to thank our panelists for their hard work and preparing to ask these questions and I'd especially like to thank our experts for uh, for attending tonight and we're very lucky to have you in our area supporting South Louisiana and bringing our issues to Washington and fighting for us. And Mr. Foles, I'd like to thank you too. Um, this is a real community service and uh, we hope you can do this again. I'd like to end with some thoughts. We really do live in a sportsman's paradise. It says it on our license plates. It's a bountiful part of the country, borrowed from upon the world, and we really do live off the golf. And that golf, that paradise, is facing challenges of historic proportions. And for our age group, it's not too early or too late to get involved. We can invite all who want to join to uh, either email us at golfyouthforum at gmail.com or join our Facebook group, Golf Youth Forums. This about concludes our time for tonight, and I thank you for watching Bayou Time. You stay classy, homo. <laughs>